Listening Dog Media. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, Lil. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Step into the world of power, loyalty, and luck. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. With family, cannolis, and spins mean everything. Now, you want to get mixed up in the family business. Introducing The Godfather at ChumbaCasino.com. Test your luck in the shadowy world of the Godfather slot. Someday, I will call upon you to do a service for me. Play the Godfather, now at chumpacasino.com. Welcome to the family. VGW Group, no purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. See terms and conditions, 18 plus. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. That is a fantastic save. This Seaman is the man here. Is Seaman Says with David Seaman. Hello and welcome back to Seaman Says as Arsenal win and hold on to the top spot and Liverpool drop points at Old Trafford while at the other end of the table Luton and Everton pick up really important wins. So what did you all get up to at the weekend? I was a little bit busy if I'm honest. I was going to say <laughs> you were at Wembley weren't you yesterday? I know, I was at Wembley on Sunday watching the posh lift the trophy which was amazing. Oh, nice. Um on Saturday, I was up, up near Scunthorpe at Carlton Towers for my son's engagement party or engagement dinner. Um, yeah, so it's been it's been busy. I was at Arsenal on Friday coaching. On Thursday, I was up at St George's Park coaching with the England under sixteen goalkeepers. Um, Bloody yeah, hell! So it's been busy. <laughs> <laughs> you just been knackered. I've been whizzing around everywhere. <laughs> Bloody hell! How was uh, how was Wembley? Wembley was great, you know. It was great to go back there, and um, you know, and as a ex, ex Peterborough player, you know, I've always got a, a place in my heart for Peterborough because of the second chance that they gave me, you know. So I will always go there whenever they ask. I always turn up. I, I was recently at their golf event, you know. I was reminded that I've got a David Seaman lounge at Peterborough, so yeah, yeah it's um, it's always special. And then. What was funny is I was driving down from my son Dan and Emily's engagement and um, I heard Barry Fry on the radio and he was brilliant on TalkSport, you know, so it was like all building up and then I actually met him and it was his birthday and it was my dad's birthday yesterday, you know, so yeah, it was a special oh, day, brilliant. but, uh, you know, meeting Barry Fry is just, he's always full of energy, isn't he? You know, like what yeah. you see is what you get. Well, no, what you see, what you get is like 10 times even more energy. Yeah, amplified. Because, <laughs> yeah, it is because he, he's so passionate about Peterborough, you know, and even, even Barry, Barry, Barry Ferguson, you know, he, um, I keep saying Barry Ferguson. I'm sure I said that on TV yesterday, you know. It's Darren Ferguson, isn't it? Because oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get Barry and Darren mixed up. Oh, anyway, so yeah, Darren Ferguson, you know, I'd, I'd met him at the golf day and I wished him luck. And then obviously I was there and I was in, as I called it, the posh seats, bum bum, um, <laughs> in the Royal Box. Um, and and then, and then as, as Darren came up, he, he, he gave me a little nod and I just like, well done, mate, you know, because it was... It was a great achievement, and um, you know, it was. It wasn't the best game. If I'm honest, Peterborough deserved to win because they played the much better football against Wickham. Um, but um, what was what was so funny is Matt Matt, Matt Jones. You're getting out of, by the way. Matt Jones, my manager, <laughs> throat agent. He was sat next to me, and then when. <laughs> when, I, when Harrison Burroughs scored the second goal, it was one of those cross shot things. It was a cross that went in the top corner. Right, yeah. And Matt, and Matt turned to me and he went, Do you think he meant it? I went, How can you ask me if he meant it or not? <laughs> Matt, 
came out went, oh yeah. <laughs> it was brilliant. I knew what I was saying. I knew what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny and then I said to I said to Matt's friend I said you can't believe what he's just asked me <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was a, it was a great day at, uh, at Wembley um, yeah nice to be pitch side you know just get all the atmosphere and everything but, so um, what other characters have you got there for the uh- so would uh, like Akin Fenwa be there or yeah? So I was I, me, me yeah. and 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 Bayo were at, were hosting. You know, we did a couple of Q and As together. Um, you know, and, and then you know we did a few interviews together and that. And he, he is full of energy. He's a good guy as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm going to try and get him on here because he, he yeah he, absolutely he that'd be fun. Yeah, he's good fun. He really is good fun. He's a giant as well. You know, like yeah. he's like <laughs> how did he as compare to you? <laughs> I'm not, uh, yeah, but like, he, oh, he's not as tall as me, but oh, he's, he's like, he's, built. yeah, he's built and ripped. Yeah, he's, um, yeah, but a good guy, really good guy, good energy as well. Oh, nice. oh good. Yeah, but then back back to the uh, Premier League. Um, I was really impressed with Arsenal, if I'm honest. It was really hard because, like I say, I was at uh, Dan and Emily's um, engagement do and and I was like sneakily looking at my at my phone all the time. <laughs> and I was, and, and, uh, and, and, yeah, and I was like, uh, oh yeah, one uh, one nil, oh two three. <laughs> it was brilliant. So it, it turned out into a very good day. But um, no, it was um, yeah, it was a great result. And then so then the next morning because I had to so I, I had to leave the party at one o'clock at night because I knew I was I was coming down to Wembley early in the morning. So I had to stop drinking. They carried on till the middle of the morning. I was, and I was very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was very jealous. Um, but anyway, you, but then I was driving down, like I said, and then I got to Wembley straight away. I was I was a little bit early, which was perfect. So then I could watch all the goals on my phone and everything. It was, um, yeah, it was good. And I was I was really impressed with Arsenal because you know, not only did they win three 0 they they could have won six. Yeah, you know, mm. they had so many chances. You know, you look at Saka, Jesus, Gabriel. You know, like Gabriel really early on with the header. You know, it was. Um, I, I thought it was a real solid performance, and then. That obviously led in, into the weekend, and um, you know, with the uh, the Man United Liverpool, you must have been. Well, I don't know. Were, were you happy, Cal? Um, I think yeah, always happy when you're not getting tanked by them, um, <laughs> which we could fully expect. Um, I think we can be honest and say it was um, Liverpool were the reason that that was a draw. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. yeah. I don't think it was anything that United particularly did. As having was, given away the penalty, <laughs> maybe Liverpool oh, would have lost it. <laughs> yeah. but I don't. Yeah. Liverpool's front three just aren't. They just you can't compare them to what they mm. were in previous what incarnations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I think I, that's I thought, the difference. I thought it was a good game. There was lots of chances, and, and Bruno's goal was was an, an amazing goal. What I wanted to ask you though, if if Kelleher hand which he did handball it outside the area he got he did get fingertips but it went mm. in so like nothing happens what happens if he handballs it if he saves it outside the area is that straight a, red did, isn't it straight, straight red. red yeah I did think so yeah hang on so yeah, did he be. I didn't think he did I thought that was the he point did touch he touch it oh he did yeah. that should have yeah. been a red anyway then doesn't matter if it didn't if it goes but in it, was it should a, have been it, a, it was only a, a slight you know it was a little thing you know not, the referee probably didn't see it yeah you know, but, if, okay. if he'd have stopped it from going in then yeah yeah, Me- yeah. Uh, that's they, an interesting one for VAR, it. though, isn't it? Yeah. If it but went wide, they would have looked at it, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. um, yeah, that was it. Was, that was a fantastic fin- finish from Fernandez, though, because as as the defender like gave the short ball, you know, you could see Bruno like saw it, you know, like in a split decision, realize what he was going to do, and if you watch him just before he hits it, he does like these little like quick feet, we call it, like a little shuffle mm. to readjust, and then pings it. Yeah, you know, it was uh, that was a good driver under the trees. That was <laughs> was that unlucky or was that Kelleher's bad positioning that caused that? No, it's 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 unlucky. It, it, and it is, this is the debate that always keeps going on about you know goalkeepers wanting to get involved in mm. the outfield play. You know, and we saw with the um, the Burnley goal as well. You know, goal is trying to play out from the back. It's not normal for us. Yeah, you know, so we get into bad positions, and then if you're a, if you're high wanting to get involved and the player messes up you are in trouble and it mm. nearly always ends up in a goal you know it doesn't it have to be, be goalie's high. fault though i mean because he's clearly told to play high up yeah 
Yeah, he's, it's, I know, but then people look at him, they go, like, oh my God, he's like, why is he so far mm. out of his goal? You know, but back in your day, if, if you were to do that, because obviously that's not the style that you were playing, then everyone would, well, as much as whoever, Dicko, whoever yeah. would have been in that position to make that type of pass, you know, it would have been probably their fault still, but you would be expected to be, I guess, much closer to your goal back. line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, even even Dicko cheat me while I was in my box. Well, <laughs> you want well, one of know. his right passes? He knocked it straight off of my head into the goal again. That is one hell of a Cheers, chip. But, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you know, but it's you know, it, it's yeah, you know, because you know, a goalkeeper's like, no, that's not the goalie's fault at all. But it looks like the goalie's fault because he's yeah. so far out. But you know what I mean? He's um, yeah, it's, it, it's two a tough incredible one. It's tough, strikes it's, though for United. Yeah. Oh God, yeah, you know, like just brilliant, um, you know. And, and I was, I was, so we were, we were at the game, and I'm watching the Peterborough game, and I've got, I've got like my app going on the on the live score for the Man United thing, and <laughs> and um, Ad, Adibeo, he was, he was rooting for Liverpool a big time, you know, because like when they were, they were like cheering in the Royal Box, like giving it loads. It, it, there was him and then the the Wickham owners. They must be Liverpool fans as well, or just. But they were like giving it plenty when when Liverpool scored, and then it went to like one all. I was like, <coughs> cough, you know, like they wouldn't look at me. <laughs> and then when it went to two one, I was like, right, and I was just like, just like leaning forward and looking down the line. But they, no, they weren't. They weren't looking. And then when it went to two two, they were like really giving it loads. So, you know, in a way, they were they were happy with the result as a as a draw, but. Yeah, when it was 2-1, I was like, oh, go on, please, just keep to this result. I want to, yeah. well, Cal, I want to also ask you, sort of, is that bottled it again? Because we haven't really, well, we haven't had a podcast since uh, <laughs> since uh, <coughs> Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you kind of bottled that one as well. Yeah, that, that, top four's yeah. gone, isn't it? let's be honest. <laughs> That's the season over. <laughs> So we'll just take what we can now. <laughs> Maybe win the FA Cup. You never know. Well, they, yeah. Well, we've still got stuff to play for. Yeah, yeah don't forget. Like it's, the, now they've dropped that many points. I mean, Newcastle aren't far behind. West Ham aren't far behind. Right. So it could they could feasibly drop even further than six if they're not careful. No, Isn't it crazy how much how much crap Moyes is getting? Yeah, actually, he's sitting in seventh position just behind you boys. Yeah. It's mm. not bad, really, is it? But I know, and, and like, what what do West Ham want? You know, like it's, yeah, it, it, it puzzles me that, you know, the, the people that like want to see good football, yet no success. What's, mm. what's that about? You know, you know, I could mention another club in North London that, you know, they're like playing pretty football, but. You know, I've been banging on a little bit too much about them recently, <laughs> and they're getting close. They're getting closer and closer. I better shut up now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's like, no, don't just be careful what you wish for because the grass is it's not greener. guaranteed. They're yeah. not guaranteed to kick on from when they, from from the standard that David Moyes set. It happened mm. at Arsenal a long, long time ago when everybody was wanting Wenger out. Everybody thought, oh yeah, this is the standard we've got. Now we're going to kick on. We didn't. Mm. You know, and it's 20 years since we won a league title. <laughs> we'll look so at Manchester United. Fair. Look at <laughs> yeah, they exactly. are a prime yeah, example. But, and that was a bit different because because like Sir Alex left on his own his own will, didn't he? You know, it was mm-hmm. a, his own decision to go. So that was a little bit different. But you know, when the crowd start getting on you and wanting your manager out, true, yeah, and then they don't kick on. It's it's like just be careful. <laughs> they won a European trophy last season, and now they and now they're seriously in the hunt to get into Europe again mm-hmm. in the league position. You know, so just, yeah, just take a little reality check, West Ham fans. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think this means also for for um, for Brighton as well? Because I think Arsenal played through them with relative ease. And yeah. there's a team that not long ago, we were really heaping a lot of praise on Brighton yeah. and their manager. And I know they've got injuries. I do get that. But but still, I mean, that's that's got to dent Deserby's chances of the next big gig, and he's he's been interesting in in recent interviews and in, well, in recent weeks where he's not committing to them. You know, he's been asked yeah. about them, and he's been very coy about the way that he's uh, he talks about his future there. And that 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 can be tricky as well because that players will see that players mm. will react to that. You know, as soon as they see interviews where he's not fully 
like you said, like you said, not fully committed, then you, you're thinking, oh, what's going on? You know, something being prearranged or whatever. But, you know, yeah, they, they have got a load of injuries. There's no doubt about that. And that will be tough. But, you know, like they, they, they were normally like seven out of 10 plus or seven mm. plus out of 10 all the time. Now they're going from like fives to maybe seven. Mm. You know, they're, they're very unpredictable, very inconsistent. Um, yeah. yeah, and we just and the, and what happens, especially at this stage of the season, is you know, it's, what is it, seven games to go? Mm. And when when oh, I've not, I've never felt this, but I, I noticed when <laughs> I was playing. <laughs> I like that little caveat. Well, I, I've never felt this, but <laughs> yeah. but teams are sometimes happy not to get smashed. Do you know what I mean? You know, they'll be Hello. all right with a 2 0. <laughs> yeah, no, but they will. You know, when they're playing against yeah. teams yeah. that are going in for the league, for the title. They do. They they get into this like this mindset of like, oh, don't get beat, don't get beat three, four, don't five. Don't get embarrassed. Now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I, know, I so wouldn't have put them as one of those teams, not with how they. Yeah, you know, but then you look at the performances and you think, mm, you know. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then you know, even like with Man City, you know, that was, you know, and I know Palace scored really early on, which made it a, li- a little bit different. But yeah, it was still a you know it was still four goals, and they looked they looked easy on that four goals as well. I was yeah. so happy for for Jack Grealish; he had a great game, you know, back in and set, um, was involved in at least three of the goals, you know. So it was a. Uh, what about De Bruyne's finish? Oh my word! <laughs> that, that was, was frightening. Filthy. It even yeah. got Pep blowing kisses to him up from the touchline. <laughs> 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 you know, you're did, you see, his, books. <laughs> did you see his comment about um, getting to 100 goals before Haaland? No, go on. He said he had a, he had a, cause obviously he's been close for a while, but he's, right. he said he's, he's been having like, a, he's been having a bet with uh, with Haaland saying, I just want to beat you to it. But he said Haaland's on like 80 goals. He said, he'll probably get there in a couple of games. <laughs> um, so- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw him doing I saw De Bruyne do an interview afterwards and he says, Yeah, he says scoring a hundred goals for Man City means that I've been at the club a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> point. Yeah, got a good point. <laughs> yeah, but it, the, but yeah. What did you make? And there's been a lot of talk about it today as well, about the um West Ham disallowed goal. For mm. Wolves, you know, like obviously Lindsay's not on because she's she's not very well. So get well soon, Lindsay. But we are going to have a right go because I still think <laughs> it was offside. There yeah. you go. I'm I'm glad you said that because I yeah. before hearing any of the commentators talk about it, it I mean it is offside and he yeah. is right in front of Fabianski. Yeah. And before everyone chimed in, everyone was like, no, no, no. It, you know, he can see. It doesn't matter. How do right, they know but- he can see? Well, because they they're talking they about the ball know. being whipped in at that angle. And, yeah. and, and, and the other argument is, oh, well, he wouldn't have got it anyway. It's like, that's not the Doesn't point. Uh, I and, mean, you don't then, know yeah. that, but that's not the point. Exactly. So, I'm with and you, then they, actually. Then they, yeah. and then they say about, move, oh, why don't you move to the side? No, you don't just move to the side. You stay in the middle of your goal and then you wait for the header. You don't just yeah. move to the side, you know, just to, to get around. You know, if he's right in front of you. And the other thing is as well, it came from the corner. The guy was right on Fabianski, blocking him in. Yeah. So he's getting involved there. Yeah. And then the header comes in, you know, so it's like, no, Regardless, I'm sorry. Regardless, you're yeah. thinking of him because you yeah. don't know that he's offside in that position, yeah, surely. Exactly. So, I mean, he you could right, probably he guess. right in front. But he's right in front of him. And yeah, yeah. I'm glad you said that because I, I thought, yeah. oh, he's, you know, it's clearly you know, disallowed. And then yeah. everyone was like, no, 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 it's not. I was like, really? Okay. Yeah. And then what Callum. he said about, yeah, but then, but then what you said about like, oh yeah, he would, he would never save the header. You don't know. You, you, nobody knows. I know. You know, it's just, no, it's like, uh, I heard it on the radio today that somebody was saying, oh yeah, but you know, if you've played your game, you know that that wasn't in in the line of sight. And I'm like, rubbish. Mm. You know, I was like, I actually shouted at the radio, rubbish. <laughs> 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 I've played the game quite a bit and that was offside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, the, what, uh, what's the other argument? It was like, um, oh, well, Fabianski could have even taken a, a step left yeah, and no made way. sure that he was in front of him. And I'm like, I don't think his instinct That's would have allowed him react. to do that. But but even if it did, I would say fair play. It's like a tactical foul at that point. It's like it's the same type of thing. People, 
you know, players do have tactical fouls. And I'm fine with that. And I know a lot of, we, we kind of touched on this. I think it was actually the last podcast or the one, the episode before, but I'm okay with a tactical foul. I think it's part of the game. And I know some people absolutely hate it, but that's why you get yellows and reds and you, you yeah. know, potentially save a guy. Exactly. It's, you, you're playing within the rules and that's fine, but know the consequences of that. So I, I don't think he would have, his thought, his mindset would have allowed him to do that, but it's just, it's such a weird thing to have said. Yeah. So, it was just, no, it, for me, it was, a, it was it, in the line of sight and you're obstructing the goalkeeper. Yeah. Plus you obstructed the goalkeeper literally five seconds before as well, like mm. trying to block him in from the corner. So sometimes you have to take your medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're we're definitely going against the grain on this podcast today, then. So, uh, and that's fine. I'd like to think I've got quite a valued, experienced opinion. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I want to get your valued, experienced opinion on this next game: Villa v Brentford. Six yes. goals, six oh, no. shots on target. Oh god! Not Defense a goalkeeper's game. <laughs> no. <laughs> Defense is not on top. Um, yeah, it was it was a brilliant game. You know, there's, there's no doubt about it. But. The, what was the oh no it wasn't the, I was thinking in a, another game but yeah they, when, you, when you look at it you know the goalies were they didn't have much, they didn't have much chance if I'm honest you know there was one of the finishers was unbelievable because he went to kick it with his right foot he missed it it hit his left foot and went in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really no he, knew, on your side. he knew afterwards as well because he put his hand up he was like well <laughs> yeah. sometimes you looks with you yeah go and buy a lottery ticket mate <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, gr- but great games, you know. I'm sure that'll get mentioned in our uh, game, a uh, uh, parry match of the week. So, yeah, but there's, well, there's a few I, we, others. We've as moved well. on quickly, and, and I feel like I can safely say this because Linz isn't here at the moment. But can we just also mention Ward Prowse's goal from the corner? Oh, no. So, you does that class oh. as a set piece for him? Does, doesn't it? Um, it it does, but it's not a free kick. Beckham's worth right. free kicks. Oh, okay. So, I get. Technically, it is that's a weird one, actually. Yeah, Ooh. it was so, good, but then, but then, it, so, so, like what I've just spoken spoken about regarding Fabianski, you know, getting blocked mm. in. You watch Antonio on that on that corner; he blocks him perfectly, but, but legally, he yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. No, but okay. You know, because I'm a goalkeeper, I hate all that. It, it, it is legally, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah. But you just watch him. He just moves in front, and then as Saar goes to make a, mo- a forward movement towards it, he just like just gets his body in front of him and totally blocks him. It's only a little one, but it totally mm. stops his momentum, and that's why that's how he gets done. But it's a mm. fantastic corner. Oh, I got I mean, you, the look on Saar's face afterwards says mm. it all. He's not even annoyed at Antonio by the looks of it. He's just like. No. How did that happen? Yeah. Like he's in awe he, of it. Like, <laughs> yeah. but then you you look at Sar afterwards, and he's like looking up, and you can see the sun is right, right. directly uh. in his face. And honestly, when when that happens, you've got you've got no chance. You've just got to yeah. hope that you see it after it's come out, and then you haven't got that massive blur in front of your eyes again. <laughs> but that happens with um, with floodlights. Yeah, you know, sometimes yeah, yeah. you know, like you watch the night matches and that you know, you see the lads like putting their hands up before their faces before they go up to edit because they can't. Well, it was it, the, the uh, glare of the sun of the floodlights. There's a few keepers. I think Joe Hart was one of them that always wore a cap in certain scenarios, yeah. didn't he? When yeah. um, well, they did, I, they did I, it at Highbury. I, I, oh, did they, they? Put new, yeah, they put new floodlights in for the Premier at the start of the Premier League because they wanted it lit up more for the cameras, yeah. and I complained like crazy. Because at the corners, it was just like proper glare, you know. And I was yeah. like, no, this needs to change. <laughs> and they did. Mm. Yeah. I, cause I, I know, well, from uh, watching Saints on a three o'clock kickoff, depending on the month, as we're getting obviously closer to summer now, longer days and stuff, the yeah. um, <clears throat> with the coin toss, we always make the away side. Yeah play at once because we know that for 45 minutes they're going to get most of the sun by the time the <laughs> second half comes around He's it's low enough so, oh uh, yeah <laughs> yeah it's like but I do it I, yeah definitely yeah. you know and I, I was the same if I went out and I knew that the sun was going to be in, in one goal mouth for one I'd be like don't try it if you win the toss spin this round yeah 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 brilliant <laughs> and why not <laughs> yeah no definitely Everton as well getting a, a really vital win but after an, an amazing mistake by Murich. Um, do you feel for yeah, him? Yeah. Or- yeah, I do. But 
he was, you know, this is the, the thing about goalkeepers playing out from the back, right? So we're not outfield players. We are, we are not fully used to people closing down that quick. Outfield players can read the passes quite easily, you know, and that's what Calvert-Lewin did. You know, he, he read that he was going to take another touch and then he closed him down. And by the time he's like wound it, Mewich has wound his, his leg back, it was too late. And the block was just, there was other, there was other options on to start with as well. He could have, he could have given it short. Um, yeah, bad mistake, you know, and, and it's very similar to, to Aaron when he got done against Brentford. But the thing um, is, I see, I, not being goalkeeper in the way that I see it, with Aaron's, there was so, there was, a, it, it was so frantic with the pass and changing the direction and getting it out there. And, and yeah, I, I guess it's the same sort of scenario in that he goes to pass the ball yeah. out, hits the opposition player, goes to the back of the net. But with Murich, it was like, he was so forever. slow. It was like everything was yeah. in slow, but at least with Aaron, things were happening and you go, oh crap, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, oops. But with this, with this scenario, it's just like, like it was it, just I in know. slow motion. Like you're going to kick the book. You know, oh, oh, well, <laughs> that's your fault. <laughs> like, it's true. He's dead right. You know, with Aaron's, the, the back pass to Aaron was slow. You know, that's yeah. why it gave him, gave chance to get, for him to get closed down. But with Murich, it was like, he got the ball on his own and was dribbling it out. And it had like a chance half asleep. Like, are yeah. you going to do anything with that? No, uh, no. no. Okay, yeah. well, no, they no, scored no. now. Oh, and then we'll go long. <laughs> oh, drop locked. It's a goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and when he finishes like that, you know, it's uh, you know on the one one nil win. He's, yeah, he highlights it even more. So. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clap or a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino at chumbacasino.com. Choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too it's a thing and now the truth is out there i can tell you about my favorite place to have fun chumba casino they have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week you can play for free anytime anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses so join me in the fun sign up now at chumbacasino.com no purchase necessary btw void were prohibited by law see terms and conditions 18 plus Download the Parry Match app and please gamble responsibly. Right, it's time for our Parry Match of the Week, guys. So well, there's a few to choose from, by the way. But are we going with importance or are we going with entertainment value or... I I always err on entertainment value, a match that has right. more of... So what do you think? So the choice, I think, the choice is Villa Brentford... United Liverpool. I think there's more quality actually in the Villa Brentford game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you got those um, two incredible United strikes. I mean that that was what. If it wasn't for those two mm. incredible strikes, it would be two nil or yeah. well one nil if you don't count. And Kobe Kobe main was strike was was that was like up there with De Bruyne as well, not it? Oh, you know that was a stamp, proper, it was great. proper. It didn't mm. even look at the goal. You know, he gets it out of his feet and he knows and he just bends it into the top corner. I wanted to ask your opinion on something, actually, David. So, I know obviously, you're working with the younger players at, at Arsenal. Yeah. If you look at the t- the players that are standing out at United this season, it is those younger players. Mm. Um, and like the under-18s as well. I think uh, the United one. Let me uh, let me have a look just to get it right. But I'm pretty sure like that well, they are top of the league and I don't think they've dropped many points at all this right. season. 
Yeah. Um, so one of the things that Eric Ten Hag did when he came in was he had, he wanted control over the whole youth setup, so they're playing yeah. in a certain way. Do you think that makes a difference? And that's kind of why we're seeing these players at United, like the main news and the Garnachos and uh, Camboala, who played yesterday, coming through. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and and that happens at Arsenal as well, where they want they, they want the uh, the players to play in in the exact same way, so that if they do get a chance to go into the first team, it's nothing different for them. It's the way that they play, mm-hmm. you know, even down to the goalkeepers. You know, they want them playing out their back, obviously. Mm. Um, you know, but like, yeah, the the young lads they they go they go straight in there without the fear of not being able to to handle it tactically. Mm-hmm. So they know, obviously, they're, they're training with them before, but. It's just logical, it's exactly, though, surely. It's exactly what they're doing at, at every level. Yeah. And do you think because yeah. because as those younger players that are so, like particularly at United, where they're having that more of an impact, so the players that have been brought in, so like Casemiro, like Casemiro looks, he looks tired. He looks, he right. just doesn't look like he can keep up with it now. But he looks like those players where they've they've had to adapt to a system, whereas the younger players know it. Are they having more of an impact on the team because they're not? Um, having to adapt to something it's just something that they've been trained to do and that's their natural thing now yeah they know it and and, and they, but then the the opposite end of that Cal is when you know when, when clubs change manager quite regular mm-hmm. because the new manager will might bring in a, a totally different way you know so then they have to start relearning you know what tactically the manager wants yeah um, you know but when it's you know if you've got a manager there that's been there a little while you know especially with, with Ten Hag he'll have said to everybody right this is the way we're playing and then they mm-hmm. all come in and they all get used to it, you know. And it's um, when I was at Wembley the other day, is Peterborough had a lot of young players, right? Mm. And Wickham had a, they had a mixture of experienced players and and young. But Peterborough had a lot of young players. And the chat before the game was like, yeah, but what about all these youngsters? I says, well, yeah, but what happens is sometimes they just go out and play because mm. they've got no scar tissue. I call it. They've got no worries. Yeah, yeah. They've got no baggage. They go out and play and enjoy it, but. Sometimes they can get overawed by the by the situation or the event, but mm-hmm. if they played their game without getting nervous, then you're in for a tough time. And that's what that's what happens, especially you know with the youngsters at Man United and even like the Arsenal guys early on in their careers, where they they just went and played. It's not until later on you know some things happen, you know you make a mistake or you get criticised, and then it starts all building up, you know. But when you've got youngsters in there. If they're all youngsters, you'll get inconsistent performances. You'll get brilliant, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, "Why? What's happened?" You know, and then mm-hmm. you know, so it'll be inconsistent. But you know, when you can get that mixture right of experienced players with the youngsters, and the youngsters just go out and play, it can be it can be good. Mm. Just as a, as a slight aside from this, I want to touch on on Mainu again, but. For me, I don't know. There's been a lot of speculation, certainly this season, with Rashford not really pulling his socks up, working for the team. Potential speculation of leaving and the rest of it. Does someone like, and I know obviously it's a different position, but does someone like Mainu almost bridge that gap so you still have that that homegrown man cue? Because he's from Stockport, I think, so he's a local lad, and and I think that's always been quite important to Manchester United to, to have yeah. that type they've of always player. Had, you know, they've had it for a long way through, haven't they? You know, when you look at... You, you could sort of thread that sort of player through. So does, does it, if that were, and I don't think Rashford will go now, but there were, obviously a few months ago, there was a lot of speculation that he might. But do you almost bridge the gap with someone who is young and hungry? Because let's face it, Rashford is, a, he's a senior player now. Whereas you've got someone like that coming through the ranks that clearly has the talent. Yeah. Will hopefully only get better. Does it? It's but almost what, bridge, like a, so, a plaster for bridge the gap to you know. Yeah, I know the, what you the mean. The next generation of local lad it, coming through. But surely you know because of what Rashford's, you know. All right, we keep saying this as well because of what he's done in the past. Mm. It, it makes you hesitant, doesn't it, to to well, say you know right, what he's capable of. Yeah, but he's not well, doing how, that. How many times have we said that? Exactly. <laughs> And I don't. I wouldn't uh, want him to go. If I was a Man United fan, I wouldn't want Rashford to go because, okay. yeah, because of that, you know. And you know that at some stage it could come. Because how old is Rashford? He can't be that old, you know. I know 26, we call him twenty six, yeah. twenty seven. Yeah. So he's yeah. So he's, he's probably. He's, 
get in there. Prime. Is it, you know, yeah, he's pr- getting well, prime. Well, he should prime be prime. Age. That's the point. Yeah. Whereas he showed all his worth mm. a couple of seasons ago when he was really on it. Yeah. And this is this yeah. is the point where I'd, he should I'd, be banging him in for fun. Yeah. In, I in a Manchester like bridge, United team. I wouldn't bridge the gap with him. I would okay. keep him on the same path. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know I mean? well yeah. You know, without I without Rashford leaving, that. yeah, you know, yeah. It's, that's that that would be my my thoughts on that. Is that no, you you don't want Rashford to leave because you know, even with Mayno, he, he he like Rashford would probably be one of his idols, you know, mm. because of how good yeah. Rashford yeah. was, you know. So to, and then for someone like that to leave the club is for me is a is a big statement, but. Yeah, even even when Mayno, when he when he scored his goal, you know his his calm and collected celebration. Do you know what I mean? Just like run to the corner flag, then just give the salute. <laughs> you know, I like hardly any expression on his face. I love that. I love that sort. Of, you know, he's not like ah, you know, like just totally out of control celebration. He was like calm, cool. Yeah. That, <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. You're, you're a decent player, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having you. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see. So after all of that, what, what match are we yeah, picking? Um, we still have decided. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for me, I, I would go with the the Man United Liverpool just because of what was at stake. You know, for, and, and it was and for both. Yeah, for both clubs. I don't just mean for Liverpool. I mean for Man United as well because a lot of people were expecting Liverpool to, to absolutely batter them, weren't they, Cal? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so the response that they had, you know, and, you know, it was, uh, there was, there were saves both ends, so. And yeah, it was a good result know. for Arsenal. And it was a great result <laughs> for Arsenal. <laughs> That's it was near, sorry, it was nearly a great result for Arsenal. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know we sort of moved on a little bit, but you mentioned then great saves. A couple of camera saves? Yes, a couple. <laughs> <laughs> We, we know who by, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, he did a couple of saves where he was back to the Anana that we saw at the start of the season. You know, like mm. just and it's only it's literally catchable and he's pushing it away. You know, and then I'm thinking like to myself, well, it, you know, he's pushing it into a safe area, but some of them I was like, oh, you could have held that, mate. Yeah, you know, but and then he did make a really area. good save in in the first half from Subasla, I think it was mm-hmm. when he, he went down once, and then he held his, he held his hand up left. That was a really good save. That you know that that's it. That's going to be get talked about in my save of the week. But um, yeah, he was back to Anana, but you know he's making the saves this time. They're not going through his hands. Yeah. <laughs> That always helps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> does help. Um, can you save it with your hands? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice segue to save the week. <laughs> there we go. Exactly. <laughs> By the way, there were some good saves all all over the weekend. Um, yeah, I've got like a full page again. I'm like, I love you when it's like this. <laughs> so I've got I've got Henderson making saves. Verbruggen, obviously in the Arsenal game. You know, we spoke about Arsenal were three. You know, it was three 0 but it could have been a lot more. Um, Ray made a good save as well in that game mm-hmm. you know an important stage Flecken Flecken made some good saves Neto I've got Murich I've got Fabianski I've got Anana he's in there because <laughs> he did make some a couple of good saves um, and then I've got Vicario made a really important save from Yates but the guy that's got to get it is Matt Sells Oh my word! He made four outstanding saves. I know he let three in, but honestly, he made some incredible saves. You know, he made he made a great save from Son. He made from Johnson. That I think there's an OBR one, which is going to get the save of the week. It was a long range shot, that, uh, deflection off someone's head, and he got a really good top hand and just tipped it over the bar. So, for that one save plus many others, Matt Sells gets save of the week. And in that game, there was another save. <laughs> what can we call it? Because I was going to say it'd be a good punch in a boxing ring, but it weren't that good. But it was a, it was certainly a, a little sneaky punch. But like, what are you thinking? But this is the thing, you can't be sneaky now. There's cameras everywhere. <laughs> and then he gets away with it. And, yeah. and I even what I could see from my TV angle, it's a deliberate punch into his belly. Yeah. Into Yates' belly by Madison. And I'm like... 
And then Yates just went down and, and he's doing the, the old VAR yeah. box in. He's like, right, just have a look at that. And when nothing yeah. happened, I was like, what? He he was so lucky because that that's a straight red. That is a yeah. punch thrown, no matter where it hits him. Seaman says in conversation. This week we're joined by a Leeds United hero, stroke legend, Lucas Redevi. Here's a quick taste of that chat. It was it was crazy because when I arrived at the club, you know, we were just lingering there at the bottom of the league, and uh, and 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 for me that's the thing because uh, uh, w- when I was at the club, it wasn't just learning about football, but it was learning about the game and improving as a footballer, as a player, and as a person as well, you know. And when we got to that Champions League, I didn't, I've never experienced such. Um, atmosphere at Ellen Road, it was absolutely amazing. I, especially that game when we, when I scored. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't game, I, I don't score many, you know, but when I score, you can remember that. <laughs> you can listen to that full chat with Lucas right here later on this week. Thanks for listening and we'll see you all later. This is a listening dog media production. Sports Social Podcast Network.